Yummy, Chef. Oh, goodness, that aroma is fantastic. Hey everybody, I'm Vera Stewart and welcome to The Very Vera Show. I'm joining you today from Atlanta, Georgia. I'm at the Sub-Zero Wolf and Cove showroom. It is fabulous. And I cannot wait to introduce you to Chef George Loudon. He is gonna give us some great ideas for yummy recipes this time of year and then introduce us more to how to use this fabulous equipment. We're gonna start with roasted cauliflower. You know, this may be a different cooking technique for you. I can't wait for you to see more about it. Then we're gonna move into Tony Satchery's yellow rice, which is a scrumptious side dish, but we're gonna dress it up a little bit. And then what about a jumbo lump crab cake? Are you hungry yet? Sounds delicious. And then sauteed rainbow shard with pancetta. I cannot wait. But we're gonna end it up today with the molasses cookie that is just phenomenal. And in Vera's Corner, we're gonna learn a little bit more about winter vegetables and how to cook them. So we've got so much to do. Let's head to the demo kitchen and meet Chef George. You know, I love every opportunity to partner with my friends at Sub-Zero Wolf and & Cove. And we've been several places with them. We were in Charlotte with Chef Vinny. He did a fabulous job over there. Then we went to Wisconsin. We've been there twice with Chef Joel. Had so much fun in the garden and at the barn. But today, I'm so excited to be with Chef George Loudon. And he is the executive chef here at the showroom here in Atlanta. Yes. So, you know, we just are so happy to be here. Thanks for allowing me to come. And, uh, you know, we would love to know more about what you do in this fabulous space. Okay. Well, you're welcome, and we're so glad that you're here with us. But uh, right now we're standing in our live product demonstration kitchen. Typically, this is for customers who are in market for our product. Okay. But we also do use and care classes for people who have purchased their products and would like to get to become know a little more, more into it. Yep, right. sure. And then uh, we also do some marketing driven events and sometimes we do some some type of fundraising stuff in the showroom space as an open event. And we have a lot of fun doing that. It's a lot different than any restaurant or commercial kitchen I've worked in in my Gosh, career. And just the aromas, I mean, the, the space just allows you walk in the door and you just it catch does. a whiff of everything that we're it doing today. It absolutely does. Well, you know, I had told the viewers that today in the show, we were not only gonna have some scrumptious recipes, but we were gonna learn more about the equipment that yes, we have so we many questions sometimes when we do it quickly in a show, we're gonna spend, slow it down today, do a little bit more with it. So, you know, why in the world would you cook a baked potato <laughs> when you can roast a piece of cauliflower that looks like that. Well, we're gonna we're gonna help the cauliflower <laughs> because I like meat and potatoes. Right. But the cauliflower, it just looked really good and fresh. I was in the grocery Beautiful. store. I thought this would be a great recipe to do for what you and I are gonna do together today. So we just took it, cut it in half, and then cut the slices in half again so we can make this manageable. And I've got it on my convection steam oven pan with a little parchment paper. And I've got a nice homemade mm. infused extra virgin olive oil with herbs, dried. Thai red chilies Beautiful. and red pepper flakes. And we just steep this over a low heat on a simmer burner for about two hours to extract all those oh, flavors. Wow. And uh, it's got a little heat. So it will really help out the, the well, cauliflower quite a bit. And you're gonna put that on top. Let's do it. So we're gonna just move this over here. And if you guys do this barehanded, since it has a lot of chilies in there, make sure to wash your hands off very well before you touch your eyes or maybe your face. And you can make this hotter or cooler if you like by simply just right. adding or um, reducing the amount of chilies in your oil. So it doesn't take many chili peppers to make a lot of salt heat. and pepper. Yeah, I'm just gonna rub this first and then we're gonna sprinkle. Okay, yeah. and you said this recipe is for roasted cauliflower. Yes. So will this steam oven give you that roasted look? It will, and you know what's gonna happen is the mode is gonna be convection steam, as I said. And one thing I really like about that mode, and it's really my vegetable mode, we'll go light on the pepper because we've got chilies in that oil. Right. But if I use a convection steam mode, I can turn steam off at any time during the cooking process. So here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna gently flip these for a minute. Okay. But back to the mode, we'll turn convection steam on, 375, at a cold start. And then we're gonna turn the steam off after about four minutes. And then that's gonna allow cauliflower to start to break down, right? Okay. So it's gonna speed up the cooking process. Then as the steam dissipates a little bit from the heat, that's gonna allow some charring to happen with the cauliflower. Wow. And that's where the flavor, that's you know, that's where the magic's gonna happen. That's where the flavor's really gonna start to come in. 
Well, yep. while you're finishing that, I'm going to come over here and speak to this Tony Satry's yellow rice because mm -hmm. we felt like that would go really well with the other oh, yeah. dishes that we're making today. Yeah, that'll so be what we did here was two and a half cups of water that we brought to a boil, put some butter in there with it. And then now it's ready. It's cooked for about 20 minutes. We're just going to toss that to get it fluffy again. And then you finally chopped some fresh seasonal vegetables. We're going to add those in. And because they're so finely chopped, they won't take that much longer to cook through with this rice. And then finally, when this is done, we'll just sprinkle it with some pretty parsley, a little pop of color there. So that'll be great with it. So one of the things that I love about this is as people are downsizing, doing second homes, the size of this steam oven and the fact that you can roast in it, do so many other things. It's a great choice for smaller spaces. So when we come back from the break, we're gonna get started on a jumbo lump crab. Yes. I'll let you get that in the oven. Okay. I'll keep working on this rice. Right. And I hope you'll come back with us in just a few minutes. Right, guys, so let's go ahead and step over to the convection steam oven. And uh, one of the things that's really great about this oven is that it does convection, it does steam, or it does a co combination mode. And we're just gonna go right in here and do that convection steam. So I'll move through it nice and slow so you kind of get a grasp of what I'm doing. And we're gonna go to quick start and I'm gonna move the cursor over to convection steam and press enter. I wanna change my temperature right now to 375. And that's just my favorite temperature for doing vegetables like this at that size or that thickness actually. So let's go over and set a cooking time of 15 minutes and press enter. And we could let it auto place or auto start, but we're gonna go ahead and start it up because we don't wanna wait. Welcome back, everybody. And if you're just joining me, I'm in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm at the Sub-Zero Wolf and Cove showroom in Atlanta. Yes. I'm with Chef George Loudon, and we are doing some fun things together. We are. We already did a couple. I know. We've got roasted cauliflower in the convection steam oven. It smells amazing. And now we're going to do a lump jumbo crab cake. Yes, we are. So Absolutely. let's show let's me what it. we're doing over here. All right, so we've got our, all of our ingredients over here. We got all of our, we got some dry mustard, onion, we got seafood seasoning, celery, fresh fresh squeezed lemon juice, makes a big difference, you know. Yes. Uh, we've got some nice uh, mayonnaise here. We've got our jumbo lump crab meat that has been nice and clean and picked, saltine crackers and fresh parsley. So to put this together, all we need to do is really get all of our wet ingredients in here. So it's gonna grab this little spatula. Let's just get them in here. This is a great tool to get all these goodies out of your bowl without well, wasting Well, and you know, in our last segment, we used the convection steam oven, and we spoke to that. And we're going to use the M-Series convection yes, oven at absolutely. this point. And I happen to get to use that quite a bit in my studio kitchen and at home. So tell the viewers a little bit about that piece of equipment. All right. So the uh, M-Series oven is... Uh, a great piece to, to work in. We've got multiple cooking modes. And then one thing that really helps people out with that, because we have multiple cooking modes and that can be daunting to some people. And we also have gourmet settings in there. So the gourmet is excellent because what it does, you want to choose a fresh pizza, you choose fresh pizza, it sets a program. Uh, it it the really temperature. does all oh, the yeah. work for you. It's the great. The temperature probe. Absolutely. We're going to do crab meat last. And because we don't want to beat up, we want the nice lumps to stay there. Yes. So let's go ahead and get our parsley in here. And we're going to put a few of our crushed up saltine crackers. All right, guys. Oh. And really, the, the parsley is going to give an amount of freshness in there. Mm -hmm. So we've got that fresh lemon juice, the parsley. That's going to really bring out the freshness. It's going to really complement the crab meat when we fold this together. So let's start with just a few saltines. Let's just look at that. Okay. About I'll half. Follow. Yep. And then remember, guys, if you're making this, uh, the mayonnaise is already seasoned right? It's already got salt in it. And uh, the lemon juice can bring out flavors as well. It's not salty, but it can bring out the flavors. But then we've got saltines. They're salty, right? You want to fold that in for me? Sure. And okay, that's actually so better. crab meat can go in yeah. and start so, getting folded together? Yeah, let's put a few more crackers in. Okay. Just a few more. And remember, as these sit here, they're also going to absorb moisture that's in the mayonnaise, so it's going to dry out somewhat. So right. we are going to bake these fresh, but the, the crackers are going to be like a sponge, basically. So while you're folded in the crab meat, I'm going to get started on this aioli right. sauce. And we're going to use some Tony Satchery's seasoning here, and then some roasted garlic. And look at here. 
you got that oh, done I love in that, that beautiful and then this is, is just minced together so this is just going to be a nice dipping sauce to go with those yep absolutely oh, wow yeah look at that now that's it's what nice. i'm calling some luck mm -hmm. jumbo crab and cakes i'm going to go ahead there's a lot of moisture so i'm going to okay. go ahead and just finish the rest of the uh, crackers in here and then what size do you recommend for this the about a two inch scoop yeah and actually if you go in a store and look there's a number right here you can see this is a number 24 scoop okay so this is a good appetizer portion if you want to do it like that and uh, if you just want an entree portion you can change okay, it whatever well, I'm you want let you go ahead and start doing that because we're going to have to go to a yes. hard break during Vera's corner today which is a fun little tip we're going to talk about winter vegetables right. and then when we come back after the break we're going to get started on a molasses cookie oh yeah that's the good that's stuff yummy so come oh, yeah. back with us in just a few minutes Vera's Corner is sponsored by Tax Slayer. It's your refund. Go get it. You know, I love summer produce as much as anyone, but winter also has a bounty of vegetables that are not only great, but they're good for you. Today, I'm going to share a few of my favorites and what to do with them. Cabbage is found any time of year in different colors and shapes. Cabbage is high in vitamin C and beta carotene. Sometimes crunchy, other times tender, cabbage always takes on flavors of surrounding ingredients. My go-to recipe is steamed cabbage. Brussels sprouts are a cousin of cabbage that grow on a large stalk. They're milder and sweeter. There are many different ways to use Brussels sprouts, but my favorite way is to roast them with olive oil, salt, and pepper. Rutabagas look like a large turnip, but they are their own vegetable. Both are high in fiber and vitamin C, but rutabagas are sweeter due to their higher carb content. Try rutabaga fries as a lighter version of french fries. Parsnips are similar to carrots. They're sweet like carrots, but have a little nutty taste that's closer to nutmeg or cinnamon. Try a parsnip puree under your main dish. Collard greens are hearty greens with a bitter flavor that is delicious when cooked properly. Their acidity makes them perfect to cook with animal fats. My favorite way to eat collards is braised. Brighten your winter with these delicious vegetables. Welcome back, everybody. And George, we're getting it done in here today. We are. We're getting it done. And we got that roasted cauliflower out of the confection steam oven. The crab cakes smell amazing. Yes, And absolutely. I love the fact that they're piled up like that. Oh, yeah. Oh, they're going to yeah, be so There's no good. filler in there, hardly. All right. And I gave you some tips on winter vegetables, so hopefully you'll take advantage of that. But I am so excited about these molasses cookies. When I first came to the showroom in Charlotte, when this whole partnership started, that was what I smelled that day when I walked in right. the door. So I want to walk through. I had George busy during the back. You found out there are no breaks on the very, very no, show. No, you, you're driving me. Okay, so he had a lot to do, so let me tell you about what George was doing during the break. So we sifted together flour, salt, baking soda, ginger, cloves, and cinnamon. And then he creamed the butter, shortening, and sugar until it was nice and creamy, the sugar was dissolved. And then at that point, he added the eggs one at a time. And so that's basically where you are right now. Absolutely. So we're going to go ahead and take this bowl of molasses right here. And, uh, you know, there are different levels of molasses as well. So if right. you get blackstrap, it's got a bit of bitterness. So I'm going to step down. So I don't really care for that bitterness, especially when I'm baking. So let's go ahead and just spoon this molasses in here. And then we'll get the mixer going again. And uh, we'll incorporate this in here very well. And then we'll go ahead and add our flour. Well, and, and we're it. using the convection feature of the M-Series yes, oven we are. for this. Yes. Um, and, you know, we, we have those questions all the time, George. And in terms of baking, you prefer to use the convection mode, correct? Yes, I do. Because usually when, he, when I'm in here, I'm typically cooking, cooking for a large group of people. Mm -hmm. So that being said, convection is usually my go-to mode. Right. So. Well, let's get that mixing yeah. and get that flour going. Let's go ahead and set that there. Let's raise this bowl a little bit. And we'll turn this on. We're going to scrape that bowl one more time in just a second. We just need to incorporate this together very well. 
kind of tidy up as we go here. Okay. Let's go ahead and stop it, get this down, and let's do a quick scrape down of that bowl. Let's get that off there real quick. Can you hold that for me? I sure can. All right. I might lick it. You could, it'd be really good. <laughs> and rich too. You know, I was telling Vera that one thing you could do is we use vegetable shortening in this cookie, but if you wanted to use lard, this makes an even better molasses cookie. Thank okay. you, my friend. All right. So let's just get this back in here. We'll scrape them off real quick. Yeah. And then we can go ahead and get started. And what we'll actually do is I'm gonna hand that paddle back to Vera because I'm a little bit scattered on this for a minute, but we're gonna incorporate the flour and all the cream, sugar, and butter molasses together because that's gonna keep us from having a flour explosion in the mixer when we turn it back on. All that, was ba that baking that? I did for years has paid off here. Mm -hmm. All right, so don't worry about that. All right, let me have that. All right, we've got a piece of parchment paper on our pan, and then what did you preheat the oven on? 325 this? on convection. Okay. And it's interesting, you know, sometimes I, I actually prefer baked goods on a non-convection mode. Right. And the reason is because usually the leavening, leavening agents react better to a higher temperature. So if we're using convection, we've got to turn the temperature down because it speeds up the cooking process by blowing cold air away from the food. All right, we're gonna have to probably finish some of this up, the mixing of it and getting it on the pans um, during our break today. So, and we've got some wonderful sugar we're gonna roll this in. So that beauty of a molasses cookie that's cracked on the top, you'll see that. And when we come back for presentation, we're gonna do one last savory dish. We're gonna do a rainbow shard that's going to be fantastic with pancetta and then show you how everything looks. So you keep mixing, I'll I will. get ready to roll in the sugar and you come back with us in just a few minutes. Thanks Vera. Welcome back, everybody. And George, we did it. We did. I've just had such a great time working with you today. And we've just had fun with recipes and equipment here at Sub-Zero Wolf & Cove that really makes you bring restaurant quality cooking into your own home. So we had you busy again during the break. There's no sure resting. Just no rest for the weary. So you did the chard. Right. You roughly chopped the leaves with the stems slice that white onion and don't you wish you had knife skills like that and chop the pancetta and the aroma when you were cooking that I could have just smelled that all day long oh, yeah. and then sauteed that pancetta with garlic and onions and then you added the stems back in yes, to the leaves and look at this fabulous side dish yeah it was pretty good it, it's just going to be great. So why don't you walk us back through quickly what we did with each of the dishes today. All right, sure will. So first of all, we start with, with the cauliflower. And using convection steam oven to roast this really changes the world of eating vegetables. Mm -hmm. So here we put a little char on there. Just has some nice color and this charring, that develops flavor. So um, if you could convection ro steam roast the vegetable, why not do that over boiling? Right. And boiling all the flavors and everything and have this wonderful vegetable. Then we did our crab cakes over here. That was a simple recipe that we just did with a, some simple fresh ingredients which makes a big, big difference. We cooked those in convection at 325 for about 12, 13 minutes just till they're lightly brown. And then we did a nice roasted garlic aioli with seafood seasoning. Oh, and then, so that's great. Those are gonna great together. And then we did our, our Tony, Tony Cacheroos rice, which is gonna come out really nice. And then we're gonna finish it off with some molasses cookies and fresh cold milk. Oh gosh, oh my goodness. Well, it's oh, yeah. just wonderful. And you know, the other thing we did today was really talk through all of these different pieces of equipment. So on the steam convection oven, what would be your tip on why someone would want to have one of those? Uh, people ask me that all the time, why buy it? I will tell you that it, you don't have to have new recipes for it. You can cook your grandmother's grandmother's recipe in there, but with better results. Mm -hmm. So that's my. Well, and that's a great one. And then the M-Series convection oven mm -hmm. and the, the difference between that and just a regular conventional oven. Right, so the M-Series is a convection or non-convection modes, but the key thing with this is the gourmet feature. So mm -hmm. if you're not sure how to do three pans of cookies, you choose gourmet cookies and it will tell you where to put them and it will set the temperature and the mode for I you. I mean, it's driving you it right driving to for perfection. You. Yep. And so all of these things are, are speaking to the fact that you can have restaurant quality food in your own home with good recipes, 
good ingredients Absolutely. and the right equipment. Well, George, I cannot thank you enough for having You're me. You're more than welcome. And Love it, having you here. It was just great working with you. And for my partners at Sub-Zero Wolf & Co., they have been wonderful to the Very Vera Show. I enjoy so much showing our recipes with their products. So as I always say on the Very Vera Show, no matter what you do, do it in good taste. I can't wait to taste one of those cookies. And I hope all of you will come back and join us again next week. To see what's cooking with the Very Vera Show, follow us on Facebook and Instagram and on Cottage Ketchup.